Good morning and welcome to our service of Holy Communion here at St Altman's. My name is James, I'm the Associate Minister here, and with me is Mina, our vicar, who's going to be preaching to us a bit later in the sermon. Service, a bit later so in the I'm sermon. I'm going to do the sermon a bit later. Do the, the yeah, why not? Yeah. <laughs> what will you be preaching to us on, Mina? So we are starting a sermon series about our vision, and so today we're starting off with Rooted, which is our... Um, kind of first part of our vision and so hopefully everybody will have an acorn as they came in and you're going to keep that for later and I'll tell you what that's about when we have the sermon. I think we're getting low on acorns so it may be that people coming in are having to share between a family unit <laughs> but um, yeah a little bit more about that later. Intrigue. And in church family news. And, mm. Mm, yeah we're getting all joined up thinking James. Yeah. Yeah. Link, link through service. Oh yeah. <laughs> Dangerous. Thanks Mina. Now it is Father's Day as well, and so we're going to begin our service with a prayer written by Pete Gregg, which some of you may have seen in the Lectio 365 app today, um, but I'm just going to pray it for us now. So on Father's Day today, we pray for dads. New dads, granddads, stepdads, adoptive dads, and solo dads. Baldy ones, beardy ones, skinny ones, and cuddly ones. Dads who tell bad jokes, and dads who dance to YMCA. Dads who know how to fix things, and dads who just pretend. Father to the fatherless, we pray for those for whom this day is sadder than it is happy. Those who feel they have failed. Those who are grieving. Those missing their dads or their children even more than usual. Father God, in a world where some dads are distant, absent, or even abusive, we lean into your ever-present love. You are faithful, especially to those of us orphaned, abandoned, and hurt. Psalm 27, verse 10. Even if my father abandons me, the Lord will hold me close. Father of comfort, heal our wounds. Restore the dignity, integrity, and centrality of fatherhood in our nation. And finally, Lord, for all those poor souls everywhere who forgot that today is Father's Day, we ask you to bless them in your abundant grace and manifold mercy with the discovery of chocolate and a half-decent card in a surprisingly well-stocked convenience store. Amen. And so as we continue our service this morning, I'm going to hand over to Leslie and our worship band for our first songs of worship. Let's stand together. Let's remind ourselves that the Lord is good. For the Lord is good. We shout for joy because the Lord is good. He was the earth with everlasting love. How good is our God? For the Lord is good. For the Lord is good. We shout for joy because the Lord is good. He was the earth with everlasting love. voices to the Lord most high. And with joyful singing we will glorify the great creator, the author of all life. We are his people and he is our God. He always guides us in his ways we know. Let joyful praises come fill this place in song. joy because the Lord is good. He rules the earth with everlasting love. How good is our God? Enter his presence with a thankful heart. Enter his courts and let the praises start. Give God the
Lord, we thank you that your love never gives up. It never runs out. And that there is nothing that can separate my heart from your love.
have a seat, and I'm going to hand over to Mina for our Church Family News interview. Um, so yes, we have Church Family News, and Janet, where is Janet, is going to come and speak to us this morning. We don't have a video this morning. No, I've got it, Janet. <laughs> Here you go. Um, so there you go. Now, I have got with me this, which Owen might be slightly familiar with. Where is Owen? Because he, um, I think Phil has, Phil has been doing some work in my garden in order to earn some money for his scout jamboree, and um, Phil dug this root out of my garden. I think it took him a very, very long time <laughs> to dig it out, but um, we're just going to leave this here as a, I did get a lot of mud off it before I came. <laughs> I'm just going to leave that here as a kind of a visual symbol of what we're talking about today. I think it should be this way round. Um, but it won't stand that way, because we're, we're talking about being rooted today. So, Janet, tell us about what you have been doing that is rooting you um, more and more into like, the knowledge of who God is. Okay, well, I've been doing a course called Discipleship Training with the uh, diocese. And it started sort of by accident, really. I can't say I felt particularly led by God in an obvious way. But during um, lockdown, I noticed it was on diocesan website. And it was a module about pastoral care. I thought, well, that's interesting. I'll apply and do it. And so the course is a six-module course. And it's really good. You can sort of roll on, roll off. Um, you can do assessments if you want to, but you don't have to. And each module um, looks at different things. So I started with pastoral care. And after the first one, I thought, I've got a thirst now for learning more about faith and different aspects of faith. So some of them were about uh, Bible learning, so the Old Testament, the New Testament, uh, mission and evangelism, um, uh, everyday faith, which was looking at the church. And then the final one, which I'm still working on, is a practical assignment, which you choose and you apply to whatever your situation is. So it's, although I started sort of randomly, I really got a thirst for it and being rooted by learning, but by meeting with other people from all over the diocese. So lots of different ways of practicing faith and learning faith, even somebody from Wales, uh, because now it's all done online. And uh, we have a study day in every term and uh, learning in between. And the material is really well produced and it involves prayer, it involves reflection and involves quite a lot of brain ache, particularly the Old and New Testament and it's really good to be pushed out of my comfort zone and to be challenged about things I've grown up believing but being challenged to think, well, why do I believe them? And to look at things perhaps in a more academic way, which I hadn't before. So it was really good in that respect. So what kept you going? Because obviously you started with one that you were interested in. Yes. And then, then you obviously thought, oh, there's something else. So what kind of kept you going then? I think I got the thirst for learning, but also... Um, yeah, I realised I was growing through it and being challenged and looking at, well, where's God using me and where could God use me in the future and perhaps begin to think out of my comfort zone a bit more. And um, the other people on the course as well, because uh, you were put in tutorial groups, so you met with your tutor group, again, all online. And... Um, just the excitement of seeing God at work in different ways, learning how God had worked in the church in the past, how he wants to work in the future. And the assignments, because I chose to do the assignments because I thought it would give me a focus. And this is a course that um, some people in the church have already done. And if you want to be a lay reader, you have to do, but I didn't do it without intention. <laughs> and you have to do extra bits if you want to be a lay reader. But, um, yeah, I've forgotten the question. Oh, yeah, what kept me going? Um, and it just kept me going that I thought, this is really good. I feel like I'm growing through it, and I'm excited by doing it. And it's just really good to be made to do it. Sometimes I don't have dis self-discipline, but because I knew I had to do something ready for the next assignment, I enjoyed that self-discipline that it forced on me, if you like. And where do you go next with this, Janet? Because you've done, you've done all of the... Have you done all the modules now? No, I'm doing the practical module now. Oh, OK. But you're nearly finished? Yes, I have. So, out of all the things you've learned, kind of what, what more do you want to know? Right, that's interesting. Um, well, what's nice about the practical module is you fit it to where you are 
you know, what you're doing. And I'm a school's chaplain. And it's really wonderful. I think what I've learned from this is God knows about your life before you do. And in the past, I've done things. And I thought, well, what was the purpose of that? And then months, years down the line, you see that purpose. And with this practical assignment, uh, I've been at a school now for four years, but of course COVID was part of that. And I'd come to a bit of a plateau with it, and I thought, well, you know, where do I go with chaplaincy? But as part of this course, I'm going to run a day at the church near the school uh, about what is the church. And so I'm doing that for my assignment, but that's helping the church build their links with the school, which they want to do. It's helping the school fulfill part of their curriculum. And I wouldn't be doing that in that way without meeting the requirements of the course. So I don't know where God's going to use this. And maybe he's just going to use it, keeping me doing what I'm doing, but in a more rich way. Or maybe it's making me explore what he wants me to do in the future. I don't know. But I do know if I'm not started doing this course, I want to learn as much as I have and got deeper and more rooted in scripture and in knowing more about what God's doing in the world and in this church. And so I do recommend it. I'm not here to sell it, but uh, having said that, it's, it's £25 a module, and you can Sorry, do... only £25? It's £25, pounds 25 a, module, a module, which is very cheap <laughs> for any learning, really. And like I say, you don't have to do the assignments. You can just do it for the, for the joy of learning. And you can just pick the assignments you want to do. You can do it over any period of time. You can just do one module and not do any more. Um, so I've got lots of leaflets, which I'll put at the back at the end. You can come and talk to me. Um, so the leaflet's there. I mean, you do ideally need internet access, but um, apart from that, give it a go and just have a look at the modules that might interest you. And it runs, um, they run two modules a term. I do have to warn you, I went in on an easy module. I thought, oh, this is easy. <laughs> but then they do get harder. But again, you don't have to do all of them. Um, so, yeah. So how can we pray for you, Janet, as you go forward? Can we pray for your um, thing that you're going to do in the oh, school? Oh, yes. Please pray for that, because i am probably be doing that the second half of the autumn term. And at the moment, that seems really big. And it, it means working with this other church who perhaps will have different ways of doing it from the way I perhaps would do it. So just pray for really good um, communication with them and that it will all come together and be a real blessing to the school, really. Okay. Yeah. So we'll just pray now for you, Janet. Thank you. Lord, thank you for this thirst for learning that you have given to Janet. Thank you for the opportunities that this course has given her. And I pray your blessing on this work she will be doing with the school and the church. Pray that through her, you will show um, your love to children, to teachers, and that we will continue through Janet to make links outside in the community. Amen. Thanks, Janet. So a little bit more about being rooted later, and we'll leave that there, and back to James. Thank you, Mina and Janet. Um, really exciting to hear about your, your journey um, with the diocese modules there, there, Janet. And I feel fairly confident that Janet isn't on commission from the diocese to sell any further courses, but I'm sure she'd love to talk to you about them later if you'd like to. Um, we're coming now to our time of confession in our service, um, where we bring before God all those things that we know we've done wrong, all those things where we know we need his help, all those things where we know our roots need to go deeper into his love. So let's say together, Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your great love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore to us the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, bring you his pardon and peace now and forever. Amen. Ali is going to come and read our passage for us now.
The reading this morning is from Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 to 21. For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom his whole, whole family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know that this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus, throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. So, as you came into church this morning, hopefully you have received an acorn. Um, some of you might have had to share. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. So an acorn is something that is full of potential. If you um, shake your acorn, you will hear the little nut or seed or whatever it is that's inside it. And so inside that acorn is the potential for a tree. And as we know, um, from the parable of the mustard seed, that tree could be a place of belonging, a place where birds build their nests and find a home. Uh, it's a place of growth, the acorn growing into a shoot, into a sapling, into a trunk with branches and leaves, and the branches reaching upwards and outwards. So in some ways, this acorn is a representative of where we find ourselves as a church right now with our vision themes, wanting to become a place of belonging and growth and encouragement and connection. And we also want to be rooted, to be anchored by the love of God and to keep on growing our roots, just as the oak tree is anchored by its roots and they grow into the hidden place below ground, searching out the nutrients that the tree needs to flourish. The roots are vital because without what happens in the hidden place, the search for nourishment, what we see with our eyes growing above ground would simply not exist. So there's something, it's really hard to see on that, and I'm really sorry, but there's something really significant about roots growing in the hidden place underground. Because whatever we know about God, whatever we read in the Bible, and through the things that we see and hear in our Christian life, the things that we have heard and felt about God, there's also something that is hidden and unknowable about God. In fact, if there wasn't something hidden and unknowable about God, then God would not be God. Augustine of Hippo defined God as other, completely other, and wrote, if you understand, it is not God. And this is why I love this, pa this passage from Ephesians 3. Um, because it's about this glorious struggle between what we can see and what we can't see. And the fact that mystery and certainty can and have to 
have to just coexist. This certainty and uncertainty have to coexist when it comes to our relationship with God. While on the one hand, we have Jesus, who is a tangible example of who God is and what he's like. Jesus is somebody that we can look at, we can see, we can connect with, we can hope to understand. But on the other hand, we have stories in both the Old and the New Testament about the ultimate unknowability of God. We read the stories of Moses encountering God in the cloud and on the mountain and being unable to see the face of God. He can see the back of God, but he can't see the face of God. Otherwise, it's certain death. There's something about God that is unknowable. And then in the New Testament, we see the stories of blazing light at the transfiguration and Paul being converted. Something blazing light happens and it just totally switches his life around. There is transcendence and mystery surrounding the true knowledge of God. Something tantalizingly outside of our knowledge, outside of our understanding. But it's also something that we just can't resist. Because we can't understand it, we want to find out more. We know something, but we need to know more. And the more that we can know is endless. This is a God who, as it says in Ephesians 3, can do more than we could ever ask or imagine with a love that cannot be measured in, now I'm trying to get this right, in width and length and height and depth. Paul calls upon the Holy Spirit to help us to grasp what we can of this mysterious love because we certainly can't do it by ourselves. So the oak is one of a number of trees which has what is called a taproot. And this is a large, central, dominant root from which all the other roots extend. And I find this interesting in this root here because you can see there's this big, big blob of a root here and the, the tiny little tendrils that are growing off of it. Now, this is what I have learned about roots of oak trees. The tap root for us is that primary knowledge of God's love what we've experienced and learned and know already. And this is how we are rooted and established. And the extending roots are our spreading search out from that initial anchoring knowledge. And we're, we're spreading the roots out for more and more revelation of what is hidden in God, more and more revelation about that fullness of love in all its width and length and height and depth. And that's a bit of what Janet was talking about there because she, she grasped hold of one thing and did one module and then she just wanted to know more. And then from that, she wanted to know more and she kept on extending those roots outwards and onwards. But in order to grow, a tree needs nutrients, and that's what those roots are doing. They're kind of angling out, trying to find the nutrients in the soil so that the plant can grow. So what are the nutrients in the soil that will help us to feed the life that's seen above, that everybody else can see of who we are as Christians? So there are so many things that can help us in our search for God and growth. So many ways our roots can reach out and explore God and his love for us. Prayer and worship, private or corporate, that brings us into the presence of God. And that might be coming to church on a Sunday finding a way to worship at home, find some music that speaks to you of God, draw or paint something that has touched you in creation, 
Get outside and walk and wonder at what you see. I've lost my place now. And, and as Janet said, there are courses to help us learn more. If you're new to Jesus, there are courses like Start and Alpha or Emmaus. There's the Soul Spark course that Ali is going to be leading us, um, leading us on um, in a few months' time. That's going to start up. And that's about exploring spirituality and how we connect to God in different ways. Um, so you might be somebody who likes to read. So let's have some book recommendations. Find somebody who has read a book that really helped them to connect with God or to learn some more theology. I'm a podcast listener, so um, come to me and I'll tell you some good podcasts to listen to if you want to find out, especially at the moment I'm listening to one about discipleship. So come and ask me about that and I'll tell you which one to listen to that I found good. Um, community groups can be an excellent source of recommendation but they're also an amazing way of journeying together to explore God and what it means to be a disciple. If you'd like somebody to walk alongside you on your spiritual journey, you can have a spiritual accompanier. Again, ask Ali about that. I know that she does some training, um, so she'll know some people who can be spiritual accompaniers. And if you think you might want to be a spiritual accompanier, also, also speak to Ali. Ali, can you give us a wave? Oh, she was up here doing the reading, so if you don't know Ali, that's who it is. Um, and you can do the discipleship course that Janet was speaking about, speak to Janet. You can take a retreat or a day away. If you want to know about retreats, come and speak to me, come and speak to James, speak to Ben. Go to a conference. I know some people like New Wine, some people like Spring Harvest, some people very, very much like Greenbelt and are going to go, be going along in August. So just wave your hand if you might be going to Greenbelt because somebody, oh, excellent at the back. Um, so somebody will know about that if you're interested. There are so many ways that we can reach out and grow and learn about God. So find what works for you. I'm going through a phase at the moment where I'm just finding it really hard to sit and read. So I'm listening to podcasts. And when I go out running, I listen to these podcasts. And it helps me to concentrate and have, you know, I'm just going through a period of not being able to sit down and read at the moment. And that's fine. Find something that works for you. We can all find many ways for our roots to spread in that hidden place to learn and to know more and to feed the life and the love that we share. But then there's a little word of warning that I want to give you. Because for roots to grow, they need water and nutrients and oxygen from the soil. But even with these things, there are barriers that will seriously hinder growth. Compacted soil is a key culprit in preventing the growth of roots in any direction, but especially in growing roots downwards. So while our metaphorical roots, as we search out and learn more about God, are not going to encounter compacted soil, there is a strong likelihood that they will run into other barriers that will restrict movement. So our version of compacted soil might be a fear of journeying into the unknown. It might be a desire to have an easy answer in black or white, instead of being open to exploring the grey areas and what is at the moment hidden. We might face the barrier of arrogance, deciding that we know definitively who God is and what God thinks about a particular thing. So there's no need for us to expand our roots further. We might face the barrier of being comfortable staying where we are right now in our journey with God, of worrying what we might have to sacrifice or face in terms of challenge if we go any deeper. We face the barrier of time in busy lives, the barrier of energy when we feel tired, 
by everything else we have to do in a day. But even with those potential barriers, there is still hope because roots are tenacious and wily. Given time, roots will grow through rather than round an obstacle. So you might not be able to see it very well, but these are roots that are growing through a, a stone. They're not completely going round it, they're finding a way to grow through it. Given time, roots will grow through rather than round an obstacle. With that initial taproot of knowing something of God's love for, our, for us, firmly planted, there is no knowing what our tenacious roots will do, even with our self-imposed barriers. Because let's remember, this root of God's love is a love that surpasses all knowledge from a God who can do more than we could ever ask or imagine. We might be surprised by our roots going deeper and finding nutrients that we never planned. So after the service in the hall where we're going to have tea and coffee, on the table right at the side here where some of the chairs are stacked, there is a long piece of paper and there's some pens. And I've asked two questions and I'd really love it if you could contribute and just write your response on that paper. And the questions are, so what has helped you to be rooted in God? Is it that you've gone to Greenbelt every year? Is it a particular book that you've read? Is it um, a particular group that you've been a part of? Is it having a spiritual director? Is it going for prayer walks? What is it that has helped you to be rooted in God? Write that down, and that can act as recommendation for anybody else who cares to look at it. And the other question is, what else? do you want to find out? What questions do you have about God? What do you want to know? Where are your roots going to spread further? And that will help us to see where we as a church are looking, what, what we want to know as a church. So write your recommendations, write what you want to know. Where do you want to send your roots out to be fed? And how can we help you to discover more about this amazing God and his uncontainable love? So take this acorn this week and consider the potential inside it. Consider how the tree grows from it, both above ground and below ground in the hidden place. Consider the relationship between what is seen and known and what is unseen and unknowable. And may your curiosity about God be enlivened. May your desire to find out more be increased. May you come to know even more this week about the width and length and height and depth of the love of God and may your roots never stop seeking nutrients in your journey deeper. So as you came in, you should also hopefully have received a little piece of paper. And that is the prayer that I want us to pray as a church over the next period of time. So in each service, we will pray this prayer. And it's part of that reading from Ephesians 3. And... I was told this morning that this was actually the reading that was in Lectio 3, what's it called? Six, five. Lectio 365, which I did not plan at all because I do not have that app, so it was not planned. And James, you've dropped your acorn. Okay, so I would like us to pray this prayer now. Um, I will pray it for you. If you can see it and you want to join in, please do. But for the next period of time, I would like us to pray this prayer at every service, because at the moment, this is our prayer about being rooted in the love of God so that we can share that love with the world. So I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit 
in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Amen. Thank you, Mina. Uh, we're going to stand and we're going to sing again in worship in a moment. And as we do, let's hold that prayer in our hearts. Um, during the first song um, that we sing, we're also going to be taking up our offering. Um, the bags will be passed along the rows. If you give um, in other ways, um, then please um, don't feel obliged to, to just pass the bag along in front of you to the next person. Um, and then during the second song, if you have children that you need to collect from a group, that will be your opportunity to go and do so. So in the first song, we'll take up our offering. In the second song, go and collect your children. They are not the offering.
come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. Nothing can compare your our living hope. Your presence. I've tasted and seen the sweetest of love where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone your presence Lord. holy spirit you are welcome come fly
glory, God is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. It is right to give you thanks and praise. Oh, what about... A little bit of a brain fail there. Let's try that last pairing again. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love, you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. Did not turn from us, but met us through Jesus. body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we take this bread in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. He gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. the body and blood of your dear Son. As we celebrate communion, as we gather close to you, as we eat and drink these gifts, make us one in Christ and with the worldwide church.
in this place and in yours. Let us pray together with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. As you come up for communion, I will be stood centrally um, in order for you to receive a wafer. If you would like to receive wine as well, Mina and Hugh will be stood to my right, uh, your left in front of our worship band. And if you would like to receive wine, head to your left. Um, and receive wine from Mina or Hugh. If you would not like to receive wine and just receive a wafer at the moment, um, then just come to your right, and either way, loop all the way around to the back, and then come back to your chairs.
because it's time for Church Family News, and Andy, I'm afraid it's your time to shine up here at the front. We know how much you love the limelight. <laughs> it's a special and a sad Church Family News this week, isn't it? Yeah. Because, unfortunately, this is Andy's last Sunday with us, um, because you're leaving us, aren't you? How can you possibly abandon us? Why are you doing this to us? <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hello. Right. It's been 
been a, it's been a, uh, it's been a blast these last seven years. So I've uh, had the privilege and honour to uh, to serve you, uh, <laughs> to serve you all. It's uh, it's been an absolute pleasure. All the ministries and all the people that I meet uh, coming and going, and those of you that are here and those of you that aren't. Um, there's a there's a prayer pot in there that. Uh, we've been praying for for the last seven years and um, over those seven years that the pot that is for prayers answered is absolutely overflowing and it far outnumbers the, the pots that have the prayers in them and uh, it's, it's been an absolute privilege to pray for you all um, in my spare time in the while I've been working you know and um, you know sadly uh, Paul Archer can't be here today but I'm gonna meet up with him on on Monday and I will desperately miss you all. Yeah, I really will. <laughs> I, I took it for granted, sorry, that everybody knows who Andy is. Because, of course, you see him up the front so often, just, you know, taking all the attention. But Andy is our caretaker, and quite literally bits of this building would not still be standing if, if Andy had not been doing all the work that he'd been doing. You've done so much for us over the years, above and beyond what your duties are written down to be. Not just praying so faithfully for us every day when you're here in the building. But you've built things for us. You've, our garden looks so much more beautiful than it was before you started your work. Um, we owe you so much as a church family for everything that you've done for us. You've been a wonderful, servant-hearted member of our team. Such a faithful prayer warrior for us as well. Not just the staff team, but for all of us as a church family. As Andy says, there, there is a pot in there of little prayer topics and prayer requests, and you have faithfully prayed your way through those repeatedly over the seven years, um, which has just been humbling and inspiring to watch as I've drifted through the worship area at times and seen you just quietly praying in the, in the chapel for all of us. Um, you, are, you are an example to each and every one of us, without most of us seeing you on a, on a weekly basis. Um, we, ha we do have a gift um, for you. Thank you, Mina. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. No. Um, you have prayed faithfully for us over the last seven years. As you prepare to leave us, what can we be praying for you and for the family? Uh, for, the, for the future, really. Um, for a placement for Elaine um, as a priest in charge of her own parish. Um, for a faithful walk through life, I think, uh, to, to be firm in faith, um, be steadfast, you know, and, um, and to take away some happy memories, really, you know, to just to cherish them mm. and uh, put them in the coffers, you know, it's just like uh, something you can treasure. Yeah. Well, I think, we could, I think we can be praying for all of that. Um, Elaine, would, would you come up as well, because it'd be good to pray for you, for you as a family as well. Um, particularly one of Andy's prayer requests is for you to find a job. So it seems, seems fair for you to be up here. Um, after I've prayed, um, we're going to have our final song of worship together. And if you would like to gather around Elena, if you're okay with that, uh, if you'd like to gather around Elaine and Andy and pray for them as we sing, um, please come and do that um, down the front. That's all right. Hang on, turn this off. I'll just turn, turn that one off so I don't speak into two at the same time. Father, we just want to give you thanks for Andy, for all that he has given to us as a community, and for Elaine as well, for all that she gave to us during her time as our youth worker here as well. I want to thank you for the example in particular that Andy set to us as a humble servant and a faithful prayer warrior for us, Lord. We just lift them both before you now. We entrust their future into your hands. We pray that you would open the right doors for both of them. And that as they step through that door into the future you are already preparing for them, they will be able to take away so many happy memories of their time here as part of St. Altman's. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you both and thank you.
We're going to stand and sing our final song of worship together now. And if you would like to gather and pray with Elaine and Andy, please do so.
לענות לשאלות.